Ladies and gentlemen, joining me now is a three-time, three-time, three-time NAIA national champion, a superstar wide receiver at one point, and now the leader of the Washington Huskies who hosts the Oregon Ducks tomorrow in the first time that both teams have been ranked in the top 10 in a very heated rivalry. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach DeBoer. Yeah. 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 Hey, boys, you hear the boys, Coach? You hear the boys back uh, in Indy? I can hear them. Okay. I can hear them. We are so pumped that you're joining us because you are – like a football guy through and through. We checked your Wikipedia. You played <laughs> when you played football until like 1997 or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And then immediately after playing right into coaching and then you go to high school, then you come right back to coaching college. Yeah. Then you end up winning three championships. Then you go, I think Indiana, Fresno state. And then now you're here at Washington. And what you've been able to build here has been fantastic. So first of all, we'd like to thank you for what you've done for yeah, football. I'm okay. Pretty- That's what you need to know that coach. And then also follow up. What is it about your style, you think, that you get the most out of your players? Because I got a chance to chat with some of them. They all love you. They all appreciate you. And is that because you're a former player? Or what do you think it is about your style that really gets the entire team to buy in no matter where you are? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. This is a, this is a pleasure, man. And we brought uh, the weather for you. It's always or like maybe you brought Seattle. the weather. I don't know. It's always like this in We Seattle. even got you to get, be able to take off the other layer. Yeah. Be- hey, before I get to answer the question, yeah, we, uh, we did some scouting on oh. what your style is. And so. So we got to we got to make sure uh, we get that we get the cutoff <laughs> Penix for Heisman, like the uh, wow. signature bow and arrow. So yeah, let's put it on. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll certainly do that. But why do you think guys yeah. like Penix follow you up here, and why do you think your guys buy in so much to what you got going on? What's yeah, your mindset? I, I think it's I think it just starts with people, you know. And uh, uh, I just love uh, you know bringing a team together. It starts with the coaching staff and and guys that you know have your philosophy um and and just making this an amazing experience and uh the you know the guys that are here um many of them were here before we got here and uh just them never flinching and them always buying in um i can't tell them how much i appreciate that but uh it's been an awesome journey here um it's been an awesome journey in my coaching career but it really goes back to just enjoying being around people and uh enjoying the journey along along the way so we're from our show is based in indianapolis so that's not too far from yeah. bloomington yeah. so we watched what you and Penix were able to do whenever you're at iu what have you seen from him since then to now that has made it a real conversation yeah. about him winning the heisman yeah. and also the most explosive offense in college football right now? yeah i think he's just continued to grow you know in the adversity that's come his way um he's just taking it on and and understanding that you know, I can control what I can control, and that's what I'm going to focus on. And uh, here you are. You know, I think uh, each and every day you can see pieces of his uh, past, you know, and how he's responded and continue to come out. And that includes on game day, you know, when things maybe aren't going your way as a team, um, him rising to the occasion and making the most of the moment and playing in the present. He's lethal. He is. He he can throw it short, long. Um, he's a heady. He's very heady. Um, he's mobile, great athlete. Uh, and so uh, just, you know, he's seen – a all the defenses you can imagine uh, over six years. And so uh, he understands the game and he's got the tools and the skill set to go with it. So you guys score so many points. Normally, whenever you run a buzzsaw type offense or have something like that, the defense is the one who has to kind of pay for it because they're on the field so much. Your defense has been very solid. I mean, it has been incredible what your defense has been able to do, especially with what the offense does, because normally in those shootout situations, the defense kind of gets ragdolled with the time on the field and everything like that. What do you guys expect out of Bo Nix and this Oregon offense that maybe your defense hasn't seen? Yeah, no question that, uh, you know, we the opposing offenses we faced, um, they know they got to keep uh, attacking. And uh, so I'm really proud of the way our defense this year has been consistent week in and week out. Um, we've been solid against the run. Uh, we've definitely improved uh, from a year ago against the pass. And uh, we know, you know, we're going to have a great challenge here with Bo Nix and, uh, you know, Oregon coming in here. Um, he's seen you know, through his experiences, uh, you know, a lot as well. And uh, you got a, a guy who's uh, completing a high percentage and, um, you know, we got to be on our game and we got to do a good job of of uh, understanding our responsibilities and making tackles when we got that chance. Two veteran quarterbacks battling here in Seattle tomorrow. A.J. Hawk has a question for you. Coach, I, I see you guys sitting there in that, that beautiful stadium. What is that stadium going to be like tomorrow? What do you expect from your fans? Obviously, college game day is there. Everyone's very, very excited. I guess, how do you kind of keep your players, how do you kind of keep them under control and keep them cool and calm and collected? 
You bet. Yeah, we have a, a very veteran group, you know, of players. And so um, from the beginning, uh, whether it was this week or in the past, they've done a good job of just keeping the main thing, the main thing and and uh, taking care of their business. Uh, we love playing in this stadium. Uh, it is a true home field advantage. Husky Nation is proud of uh, what this place is all about when it's loud. And, uh, you know, the pride and tradition of the, the program goes back decades. And uh, the environment here, the atmosphere here is uh, something super special. As I was doing my research, AJ, I guess what, 90s? Was it the 90s? Yeah. When Washington yeah. was the wagon? Like yeah. Washington and Kirk Herbstreit was talking about this in our production meeting earlier. I guess Washington used to show up with like gold pants. The dudes would all be like shirtless on the field Ooh. and they would win games before it even started. It was like Washington was feared. You're back at that again. Yeah. Have you seen that from That's, the fan base? Is there appreciation, I would assume, for the, the fans? There totally is, and uh, especially the alumni that uh, poured so much into this program and uh, got us to that point and uh, want to con continue to be proud and keep us uh, at the top of the of the list in the country. And so, um, you know, our fan base is proud. Um, it's exciting to work together with them. They see what uh, not just what happens on the football field, but they see the type of guys we have in our program. NIL? How do we, we have to use it, right? Have to happen. Yeah, it's definitely a part of college football, a car, part of college athletics. And so how much do you focus on that? Is that something you have to focus on? You, you have to, you have to, it's part of uh, what, what goes on and um, you know, just uh, you know, there's pieces to even our season this year where uh, yes, guys re return because of development and the experience that they're going to go through the moments um, that are super special and the ones we've created. But you know, NIL is certainly a part of that as well. Tone Diggs has a question for you. He's wearing a cowboy hat. Yeah, coach, uh, you coming from the offensive side of the ball, your your whole coaching career and playing career, was this basically the dream scenario when you, you come in and you have Penix and then you have three wide receivers who are all going to be drafted pretty high probably? Yeah, it, uh, it, it set up pretty well. I will have to say <laughs> that. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, you know, when Michael came in, you know, the other piece too is not just his skill set, but him uh, having a, a pretty good – dose of the offensive system, you know, back in 2019 when we were together and then that system carrying on, uh, uh, you know, that he's a part of there at, at Indiana. And, um, you know, when he came in, you know, he was like an extra coach on the football field. And then, like you said, surrounding him with Jalen McMillan, uh, Jalen Polk, Roma Dunze. I mean, those guys are just uh, special. And, and every day they keep getting better. And, uh, you know, I still don't think we've seen uh, what they're capable of. Now, we're all trying to push Penix, you know, because anytime you're trying to do a Heisman run, that is kind of the conversation starter. Who's somebody on your team that we haven't talked about who has been a mainstay, a factor in where you guys are right now? Yeah, I mean, those guys that we just mentioned, um, the, you know, Roma Dunze uh, just continues to, to be highlighted, uh, you know, but Jalen McMillan as well. Um, you know, I think our offensive line, you know, protected Michael and uh, just really keeping him clean. Um, he works it, it just very cohesive with those guys, and they take a lot of pride in keeping him upright, keeping him clean. Um, but he does, you know, a good job of putting them in spots to be able to be successful with different checks and just, uh, you know, the way he gets rid of the football on time and, and all those things that go along with being an elite quarterback. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, obviously there's been a lot of talk about the Pac-12, especially this year. But when you first came to Washington, did you, were you aware of that possibility? possibility of you know that hey we might not be in this conference forever and then now that you know it, it is official and you guys are leaving and basically everyone is ha have you had to sell the travel portion of what your team has to kind of adapt to now that you guys this is so far out here. so far <laughs> this is so yeah. far out it's way it's beautiful when you get here yeah but it is so far out here and this is going to be normal to connor's point yeah going at forward right yeah you know coming here no that was definitely not even in in my sights as far as you know, thinking that we'd be in a different conference in the Pac-12. But, um, you know, now that we are, uh, you know, a year from now going to be in the Big Ten, um, you know, I, fortunately, we're in a city that it's easy to get in and out of. I think that's one piece that, um, you know, it, there's some there's some long trips even in the in the, in the Pac-12, uh, you know, going to Arizona, you know, and those trips uh, all the way across from, from coast to coast are a little bit further, um, but we'll adjust and, you uh, you know, we'll, we'll be ready. We, you know, we went three time zones over a few weeks ago uh, against Michigan state, you know? And so I think that was a good little How'd test go? test run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shout out Foxy over there. He's a big Michigan. Yeah. State let's not fan, talk obviously. about it. Coach. Killed him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're going to do that. Um, I did not know that Washington was this close to Seattle. It's this is a city campus. Yeah. I mean, it is a urban campus, a city campus. And uh, did you what did you know about Washington before you got here? And what do you know now about this particular universe? Yeah, you know, we played here when I was at Fresno State in 2017. And uh, 
that was coming off of a run that they had in 2016 going to the final four with coach Peterson. And, uh, you know, I just remember the environment being just probably what it's going to be tomorrow and, uh, being really special. Um, got a quick, uh, look at, you know, the scenery while you're coming in and out of the city. Um, it is close. You can get downtown if you want, but I do feel like the college itself is kind of its own piece as well. Yeah, it's like its own part of the city. Yep. It yeah. feels like it's right outside, but it is, yeah. Hey, these buildings are beautiful on this campus. Nice. We're talking like chapel looking stuff oh. old school it has an old school feel yeah. you guys throwing really fish is. are you throwing fish pat later today i i, I guess there is going to be a fish tossed to me at some point I, have you caught a fish out here yet? i've caught a fish okay what am i doing i'm I, i'm trying to eyeball the head is that what i'm trying to grab <laughs> i just hold on for dear life okay. i mean just be ready it, it's, so slippery. I, it's slippery i fisted a fish before you know a catfish out there in south yeah. carolina i don't think this is the right <laughs> fish to fist no as i don't think you, you should probably no. give it a shot though how much have the Pacific Northwest like culture and mindset have you kind of used to your advantage whenever you're kind of trying to pitch guys to come up to a city that I assume not a lot have been to? It's it's huge. You have uh, you know, four million in the greater area. Um, and so you have those those resources that a big city has and those experiences, you know, as far as what you want. And uh, you know, the environment uh, is shaped by, you know, a lot of our alumni do stick around. And so they are passionate dog fans. Um you know, every Saturday, it's about the dogs and everything leading up to that during football season. Um, it's about the dogs. So, um, you know, as far as this area of the country, uh, it, it honestly, there's just such good people. If you open your arms up to them, they'll open their arms up to you. And so it's been well, really easy to fit in. Well, the Washington State fans hate me. here. I, I honestly don't know how this is going to go, but I'm, I'm thankful that... You know, you're on our show right now. The huh? UW fans love you, okay. just so you know. All right. just so you know. <laughs> I was flying out here this morning not knowing how it was going to go. Let's talk about your relationship with some other coaches. Dan Lanning, fiery guy. We saw a speech before Colorado. That obviously went viral. But you two are now the top of a very strong Pac-12. Mm -hmm. Do you know him? What are your interactions with other coaches? And how does that whole thing go for you? Yeah, you can't help but have uh, a ton of respect for what he's done there in just a short amount of time as well. And, um, you know, just a great young coach. Uh, you know, we do have similar backgrounds coming from small colleges, you know. So um, just other than your your normal meetings that you're a part of, uh, you know, that's that's it. But uh, nothing but respect for what they're what he's doing there with his staff. Sioux Falls guy done good here. AJ, your last question for coach. Coach, how have you uh, you been able to come in there and instill your culture and everything and win right away? You A lot of times coaches have to get somewhere and kind of recruit their kind of guys that fit their system. How have you been able to come in there and, and really just hit the ground running? Yeah, and what is your culture? Yeah, I mean, I, again, goes back to people. Um, it just goes back to making this uh, one of the greatest experiences. And it's it starts with football and winning games makes it a great experience, right? So yeah. you got to be competitive on the field uh, to make it super special. But just, uh, you know, when you walk away from college football and this window is so is so tight. I mean, it's four years, five years with the COVID year six, I guess now. Seven, eight. There's a guy playing eight years. Yeah. 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 Nine, ten, ten what? years as a 40-year-old playing. But, uh, you know, this window is so small, but the things you'll take after it and who you are as a person above and beyond, uh, you know, your years here at UW, um, you know, that's what the, the relationships and all that's, you know, the setup of your career um, beyond football and the National Football League. Uh, that's that's what it's all about. And uh, I have a coaching staff that shares that philosophy, uh, pieces of that philosophy. They all have different personalities. Uh, we gel well together. We tap into each other's strengths. And, uh, you know, ask our players to do the same thing. And, and uh, there was great guys here um, before we got here. And we brought in a few of those uh, that added to the mix. And, again, open arms for everyone that wanted to be a part of it. What happens for the rest of the day here for your team? You guys watch a movie tonight? What does it look like as we – and this is the biggest game, mm -hmm. right, your team has had since yep. you got here? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll we'll go through a practice uh, right behind you here in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I've been yelling so. up here. I apologize for any interruption. I'm sure the video cameras will be right there on our. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> any trick plays? Put those out early. So yep. we can zoom in on any fakes that you got going but, on. Yep. But uh, you know that we have practice, and then uh, there's some meetings later in the afternoon. Uh, so, you know, some some walkthroughs, and we'll head over to the hotel this evening and uh, just kind of lay low. Um, guys like to watch some football. Um, we'll have a team meeting, uh, some some things like that. So um, just uh, the normal schedule. Hey, the Pac-12 is a buzzsaw right now. For its last year, it's putting its best foot forward. Mm -hmm. You guys seem like a team that's going to be able to handle it all. Congrats to you on the success. Thank you for the hospitality, and yeah. it's gorgeous out here. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is the weather every day, huh? Every day. Every day. <laughs> yeah. 365 <laughs> days. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Coach DeBoer. Yeah.